Welcome to the winter 2012-2013 edition of Rushmore Borough Council's Arena Magazine, featuring some practical points like dates for recycling and rubbish collections over the Christmas and New Year periods, and problems related to changes in council tax benefits. But in a lighter vein, special events in the Aldershot and Farnborough town centres and shopping areas, and a general roundup of festive entertainment. And um, if you uh, if you should wish to contact Rushmore Borough Council about anything, the telephone number is 01252 398 399. And the website is www.rushmore.gov.uk. And Arena is also available in large print. And if you have any problems receiving Arena, you can call Jill Chisnell on 01252 398 744. Well, this edition of Arena is brought to you by FATN Talking News for the Visually Impaired. Our readers today are Margaret Hamm and Alistair Jaffray, and our engineer is Ian Cook, and I am Tony Osteen. And we start with a message from Councillor Peter Moyle, leader of Rushmore Borough Council, who writes, Welcome to the winter edition of Arena Magazine, which takes us from Christmas through to March next year, and is packed with information to help you celebrate the festivities and make the most out of living in Rushmore in 2013. I was delighted to attend the official opening of the new Westgate Leisure Development in Aldershot. Westgate is a very welcome addition to the area, and the new cinema, food store and family restaurants bring welcome choice to the town. There is also exciting news about the new cinema planned for Farnborough, it's due to open in 2014. Christmas is a time for reflection and for giving thanks to those who work hard to make life better for everyone in our community. There are lots of inspiring organisations and individuals in Aldershot and Farnborough, and this issue celebrates the work of the Olive Branch Clothing Exchange in Farnborough, RHL's Sparkle magazine created specially for residents with dementia, and the Community Matters Partnership, which improves links between local charities and Rushmore businesses. If you know of a volunteer who's made a difference locally, make sure you nominate them for our community award, and details will be given later on. Christmas just wouldn't be the same without a traditional pantomime. This year's Prince's Hall pantomime is Beauty and the Beast, and as always, it promises to be full of laughter and great musical numbers. Tickets are selling fast, so make sure you book yours now. We've also included our usual What's On listings, so that you can find out what's happening locally. For even more events and activities, visit our website, www.rushmore.gov.uk slash events. And don't forget your rubbish and recycling collection day will change over the Christmas period. Details of the changes are given later. And finally, may I just take this opportunity to wish you a fantastic Christmas and a very happy new year. And I hope you enjoy the magazine. Town centres and shopping areas throughout Aldershot and Farnborough are preparing for festive fun with a host of events this Christmas. In Farnborough, the Meads is planning entertainment every Saturday in the run-up to Christmas. Santa's Grotto is free at the Princess Mead Shopping Centre and will be open from 11am to 3.30pm every weekend. The Salvation Army will perform from 10am to noon on Saturday the 15th of December and St Peter's Church will offer free Christmas wrapping at the Mall on 22nd of December. The centre will also host the Phyllis Tuckwell Hospice Tree of Memories in December. In Aldershot, shoppers will be entertained each weekend in the run-up to Christmas. At the Wellington Centre, children will be able to meet Father Christmas in his grotto every weekend for free. On Saturday 15th of December, the YEM Theatre School Dance Group and Rock Choir 
will be performing, and as part of the Centre's Christmas Roadshow and the Prince's Gardens Bandstand is hosting music and carols. There will also be free parking on Sunday 16th of December at the Wellington Shopping Centre Car Park. Keep an eye out for a copy of the 2013 Aldershot Calendar, too, which features photos of the town taken by local people. It costs £5, and proceeds will go to local charity Parkside. There will be a chance to remember a loved one. Visitors to the Park Crematorium are invited to tie a message on a special memorial tree over the festive period in memory of a loved one. The tree is put up in the Hall of Remembrance at the crematorium in Guildford Road, Aldershot. Cards will be provided free. In the 12 years since the launch of the memorial tree, its popularity has grown, with 500 messages written in the first year to more than 3,500 this year, last year. For more information, you can contact the crematorium on 01252 321 653 or you can email bereavementservices at rushmoor.gov.uk The crematorium grounds will be open from 10am to 4pm on Christmas Day, Boxing Day, New Year's Day and Saturdays and Sundays. The borough's cemeteries at Redan Road, Aldershot, Ship Lane and Victoria Road, Farnborough will be open every day from 9am to 4pm. Now the crematorium building opening times are as follows. Saturday the 15th and Sunday the 16th of December, noon to 4pm. 17th December to the 20th of December, 9am to 5pm. Friday the 21st of December, 9am to 4.30pm. Saturday the 22nd and Sunday the 23rd of December, noon to 4pm. Christmas Eve, 9am to 5pm. On Christmas Day and Boxing Day, 2pm to 4pm. Thursday the 27th December, 9am to 5pm. Friday the 28th, 9am to 4.30pm. Saturday the 29th and Sunday the 30th of December, 2pm to 4pm. New Year's Eve, 9am to 5pm. And finally, New Year's Day, 2pm to 4pm. And uh, now something about the uh, council off opening times for the council offices. The council offices in Farnborough Road, Farnborough, are usually open from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Thursday and from 8.30 to 4.30 on Fridays. But they'll be closed on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day and Boxing Day. And during the festive season, the opening hours are Thursday the 27th and Friday the 28th, also on New Year's Eve, and the offices will reopen um, after the new year on Wednesday the 2nd of January. But don't forget there's information and advice about our services on our website www.rushmore.gov.uk And now I'd just like to give you a flavour of some of the advertisements that appear in this edition. There's one from Farnborough Neighbour Care which is is actually the this is a, it's an organisation provides transport for Farnborough residents who need to attend medical appointments but are unable to use public transport. The advertisement is really asking for volunteers, but there's a phone number here which I'm sure would be useful to know if you were to feel that you found the service useful. And the telephone number is 01252 371 199. The uh, solicitors, Neil Turk Rochfort of Victoria Road, Farnborough, are offering um, free half-hour consultations, and the telephone number there is 01252 515 155. If Tai Chi is your thing for meditative self-healing exercise classes, um, from Surrey and Hence Tai Chi dot com. And classes are suitable for complete beginners and they're available at Hawley, Mitchett, Aldershot and Tongham. And the telephone number there for inquiries is O seven eight five five 
850427. And finally, of the advertisements, there's one from Home Trust Loan, um, which asks the question, do you need financial assistance to improve your home? Loans can be used to pay for heating systems, replacement boilers, roof repairs and more. Our Home Improvement Loan Scheme is supported by Rushmore Borough Council and tailored to what you can afford. And the telephone number there is 02392 375921. Their website is www.hometrustloan.org.uk. Rushmore film lovers are in for a treat as Aldershot celebrates the opening of a new leisure complex and plans for a new cinema in Farnborough take a major step forward. Westgate, Aldershot's new £65 million leisure development, opened in October with a gala preview screening of Skyfall, the latest James Bond film, at the town's new Cineworld Cinema. As well as the seven-screen cinema, Westgate includes a Morrison's food store, Travelodge Hotel and eight restaurants due for completion soon. The scheme was a joint venture between the council and City Grove and was financed through a £51 million forward funding agreement with Legal and General Property, which owns the development site. New signs have been put up to guide visitors between Westgate and the town centre, which is hosting many special family events over Christmas and New Year. And for more information about Westgate, you can visit www.westgate-leisure.co.uk. Construction of a new cinema and restaurants in Farnborough Town Centre will start in the new year. Rushmore Borough Council, St. Modwin, which owns the Meads, and VUE, VUE that is, have signed a formal agreement that will bring a seven-screen VUE cinema and 35,000 square feet of restaurants to Kingsmead. The council granted planning permission in early March, and the cinema is due to open by summer 2014. The development complements Rushmore Borough Council's planned £1 million refurbishment of Queensmead, Work on both projects will begin in early 2013. Councillor Peter Moyle, leader of Rushmore Borough Council, said, At the moment, Farnborough offers a limited choice of evening entertainment. This new scheme will give the town a real boost. The new cinema will offer a wide choice of entertainment, ranging from movies to opera, ballet to live rock music and sport. The scheme will also provide improved pedestrian access to and from the Kingsmead multi-storey car park, with new escalators feeding directly into the shopping centre. Other planned improvements include the refurbishment of three floors of the car park and new public toilets in the centre. And the next item is about the prospect of state in Farnborough with a call to action. Local people are playing a key role in deciding how to use a million pounds of big lottery funding to improve a Farnborough estate. A group of residents on the Prospect Estate have launched Getting Started, a fact-finding mission to build a clear picture of what the estate is like, what issues need to be addressed, and how people would like it to be. The lottery's big local funding was awarded to the estate in the spring. Heather Chalkley, Community Development Officer for First Wessex, said, This is about the community working together to bring about change. We're appealing to everyone to get involved and attend our events to have their say. And to find out more, you can visit www.pebl.info or call 07879-384014. This is about um, information how to recycle your festive leftovers. You can reduce the amount of waste going to landfill by recycling right this Christmas. Please recycle glass bottles and jars in your blue recycling box or basket. Please don't put Pyrex or broken drinking glasses in with your glass. These should be wrapped and put in your rubbish bin. Paper, cardboard, cans, tins, plastic bottles, aerosols and Christmas cards 
which don't contain too much foil or glitter, should be recycled in your blue bin. Don't put any Christmas wrapping paper or plastic wrapping in your recycling bin. These cannot be recycled. We can also recycle batteries. Simply pop your used batteries into one of the bags we delivered or a food bag and leave on top of your blue bin on collection day. And following that article, here are the rubbish and recycling collection dates over the festive period. We'll be collecting rubbish and recycling as normal until Christmas Eve. Collections will then be one or two days later than usual. Collections will return to normal on Monday the 14th of January. To check the dates of your collections, visit www.rushmoor.gov.uk slash inmyarea and enter your address details. This year we're recycling real Christmas trees again. Just leave them beside your green rubbish bin on the opposite week to your recycling collections and we'll collect them between Monday the 14th of January and Friday the 25th. Please remove all decorations and cut large trees, that's to say over five feet tall, in half. Now, if your usual collection day is Monday, revised collection day for week commencing December the 24th, there'll be no change. The revised collection day for week commencing December the 31st will be Wednesday the 2nd of January. Your revised collection day for the week commencing January the 7th will be Tuesday the 8th. If your usual collection day is Tuesday, the revised collection day for the week commencing December the 24th will be Thursday the 27th. The revised collection day for the week commencing December the 31st will be Thursday the 3rd of January, that is. And your revised collection day for week commencing January the 7th will be Wednesday the 9th. Now, if your usual collection day is Wednesday, the revised collection day for week commencing December the 24th will be Friday the 28th, for week commencing December the 31st, Friday the 4th, and for the week commencing January the 7th, Thursday the 10th. Now, Thursday, usual collection day. For the week commencing December the 24th, it will be Saturday the 29th. For the week commencing December the 31st, it will be Saturday the 5th of January. And for the week commencing January the 7th, it will be Friday the 11th of January. And finally, if your usual collection day is on Friday, for the week commencing December the 24th, it will be Monday the 31st. For the week commencing December the 31st, it will be Monday the 7th of January. And for the week commencing January the 7th, it will be the Saturday the 12th of January. And now for a list of the various council committee meetings and their timetables. And on December the 18th, there'll be a cabinet meeting at 4.30 p.m. Then in January, on the 2nd, is the Development Control Committee. The 8th, the Cabinet at 4.30 p.m. 10th, the Licensing Subcommittee for Alcohol and Entertainments. 14th, Leisure and Youth Policy and Review Panel. 15th, Licensing Subcommittee. 17th Corporate Services Policy and Review Panel 21st Borough Services Policy and Review Panel 22nd The Environment Policy and Review Panel 24th Community Policy and Review Panel The 28th Licensing and General Purposes Committee The 29th The Cabinet at 4.30pm On the 30th The Development Control Committee and on the 31st, the Licensing Subcommittee. And then in February, on the 12th, is the Licensing Subcommittee again. On the 19th, is the Cabinet at 4.30. 21st, is the Full Council. 27th, the Development Control Committee. And the 28th, the Licensing Subcommittee. And then in March, on the 11th, is the Standards and Audit Committee. The 12th, is the Licensing Subcommittee and the Cabinet, that's at 4.30. And the 18th is the Leisure and Youth Policy and Review Panel. The 21st, Corporate Services Policy and Review Panel. 25th, the Borough Services Policy and Review Panel. The 26th, Environment Policy and Review Panel. And the 27th, Development Control Committee. 
and the 28th, the Licensing Subcommittee, Alcohol and Entertainment, also Community Policy and Review Panel, and the public are welcome to all meetings. The most start at 7 p.m. and at the council offices in Farnborough Road. And for more information, call Cathy Flat on 01252 398 829. There are friendly faces helping to raise a smile. A team of volunteers are offering their time to people living in isolation in Rushmore. Farnborough Befrienders is urging residents to put them in touch with people who could benefit from seeing a friendly face. Pam Hammond, a volunteer with the Befrienders and Home Help Administrator for Rushmore Voluntary Services, said... We are happy to visit anyone who is living in isolation, whether they are young or old. Our befrienders have all been trained and CRB checked, and, as well as being friendly with a sympathetic ear, can make referrals to other agencies to ensure people living alone are given the help they need. Our volunteers come from all walks of life. Some have experienced loneliness or bereavement themselves, and all are very good listeners. We have nine volunteers and would welcome any new referrals who may wish to use this new and valuable service. To find out more about Farnborough Befrienders or to refer someone you know, call 07879 North Town is being transformed. <coughs> Residents who once lived in a dated 1950s development in North Town, Aldershot, are celebrating after moving into brand new apartments. As the regeneration of the North Town area continues apace, a group of older residents are already enjoying their new homes. Residents of Alma House, who are all aged 55 and over, moved into their brand new apartments this autumn and have now happily settled into their new homes. Alma House, on the corner of Denmark Street and the newly named White Road, has been designed by First Wessex, to meet the needs of residents requiring sheltered accommodation, including support from First Wessex Care and Support Team. It has a number of communal facilities, including a hairdressing salon, a laundry room and a lounge. Each apartment has access to a communal garden. Most ground floor properties have a small garden area, and all the first floor properties have a private balcony. Wendy Dokuz, aged 67, who was a resident of the old Alma House for ten years, said, It's very, very nice. It's just like living in a first-class hotel. I like everything about it, from the shower room to the kitchen. Everything is just perfect. It's clear that nothing's been done on the cheap, and we've been given the best. Everything is top class. And there's a picture of Wendy standing on the balcony of her first-floor uh, apartment uh, in front of a clap what appears to be a clapboard extension to a brick building, painted a lovely pale violet colour, and she stands out very well against that in a bright red jersey and black trousers. It's a tale of urban regeneration. North Town is a seven-year regeneration project by First Wessex, in partnership with the Council and the Homes and Communities Agency. The scheme will transform the estate for residents, the wider community, and future generations. It will see all the existing 471 homes replaced, with the potential to develop a further 226 homes. This large-scale project will also see some of the local shops redeveloped. The North Town Estate has a strong sense of community, but the existing flats do not meet modern building standards or provide the mix and type of accommodation that is now needed for 21st century living. To keep up to date with the My North Town project, go to www.mynorthtown.net. And the next item carries the rather apt headline, Partners in Crime. Was the, the Council's Community Safety Team has joined forces with teams at Hart and Basingstoke and Dean Councils to tackle antisocial behaviour and crime and to save money. The teams came together on November the 1st, led by a single community safety manager, Carolyn Ryan. Although the community safety staff will still focus on their own areas, the move will also create capacity for them to work together to tackle shared issues and flexibility to respond to urgent ones, such as antisocial behaviour at busy times. 
The new arrangement forms part of the savings programmes for all three councils, saving around £100,000 a year in total in the longer term. And it's also seen as the first step towards potentially bringing together the three wider community safety partnerships, Safer Heart, Safer Rushmore and Safer Basingstoke at Dean, to form the Safer North Hampshire. The Community Award. Do you know someone who goes above and beyond to improve life in their community? Rushmore Borough Council has launched its Community Award and is seeking nominations for volunteers who have made a long-term or dramatic difference. Chris Todd, Democratic Support Officer at the Council, said, Rushmore has a very strong volunteer base, and this is our opportunity to say thank you. Last year's winners were Mike and Susan Shea, who helped set up a Farnborough food bank for local people in need. Nominations are open until the 1st of March 2013, and the award will be presented in June. And to find out more, call Chris on 01252 398825. Takeaways are backing a Drink Less campaign. <clears throat> Takeaway restaurants in Aldershot and Farnborough have given their backing to a campaign highlighting the benefits of drinking less alcohol. As part of the Drink Less campaign, food containers at numerous fast food outlets in the region now bear messages such as half the glass, half the calories, and half the bubbly, half the wobbly, in a bid to raise awareness and encourage people to change their behaviour and drink a little less overall. Campaign posters and advice leaflets have also been delivered to 24,000 homes. The initiative is aimed at helping to reduce alcohol-related health issues and injury and has been launched by the Hampshire Alcohol Partnership. Research shows that middle-aged adults are among the main groups who may be drinking ex excessively. Christine Jackson, who is Deputy Director of Public Health at NHS Hampshire and Chair of the Hampshire Alcohol Partnership, said... A couple of large glasses of wine of an evening, perhaps, or stopping off in the pub on the way home from work. If it happens most days of the week, chances are you're drinking more than is healthy. You can visit for that www.hans.gov.uk slash drink hyphen less for more information. And uh, taxi cab license plates will be easier to read. New license plates have been launched to help residents recognise taxis and private hire minicabs licensed by the council. The plates are on the back of vehicles and are easier to read than before. Minicabs also have side plates showing their license plate number and a reminder that they can be pre-booked only. Drivers of licensed taxis and minicabs undergo vigorous checks to make sure that they are insured and meet appropriate standards of driving, literacy, numeracy and local knowledge. The new plates aim to help keep customers safe and prevent travel in unlicensed taxis. A new homeless centre is Tracy's latest success story. A young Aldershot woman who spearheaded a campaign to coordinate businesses and charities is bringing dramatic results. 35-year-old Tracy Marlowe grew up in North Town and her experiences led her to set up the social enterprise Community Matters Partnership, CMP, uniting businesses with local charities and coordinating projects to help vulnerable people. The partnership has just celebrated the launch of a new homeless centre in Oldshot High Street after raising £48,000 through a series of projects with the Vine Day Centre in Aldershot and 18 local businesses. The centre, which includes kitchens, training rooms, showers and private rooms, offers hot meals and counselling to help beat drug and alcohol addiction and to address mental illness. Tracy said, I know how successful we can be in making life better if we work together as a community. In previous employment, I learnt charities and community groups wanted access to corporate support, but lacked the skills or the contacts to do it effectively, and businesses were keen to support good work in the community. That's where I come in, bridging the gap to get projects moving. 
Among the recent projects brought about by CMP are the refurbishment of the Queen Elizabeth Park, a community gardening day and clean-up of Piper's Patch in Aldershot. Tracy added, Community engagement really brings big benefits to businesses. It helps keep the company profile high, provides opportunities to network, and offers an opportunity for staff to develop their skills while helping others. For charities, it means a steady stream of fundraising events and the chance to learn the key skills from corporate partners which can help secure their long-term future. It's been a record year for the clothes swap shop. A free children's clothing exchange in Farnborough has experienced a record year helping more than 460 families. Since its launch, thousands of families have benefited from the Olive Branch Scheme which takes place every Thursday morning during school term time at the Church of the Good Shepherd in Sand Hill. Organiser Sue Riddleston said, Families from all walks of life attend our swap shop. For every piece of clothing they donate, they're given a credit to take one away. It's a lifeline to many families, and it's wonderful to see so many people from such different backgrounds integrating and helping each other. The project is just one of many run by the church. It also offers English language classes for Nepalese residents. The church also runs a parent and toddler group on Wednesdays and provides crucial food parcels to those in need of a bit of help. Collections are also underway for Christmas food parcels. For more information about that, you can contact 01252 549 481. And it's good news for Samuel Cody's Specialist Sports College in Farnborough because they're celebrating a £99,000 windfall from Sport England. The money will help upgrade the school's 15-year-old sand-filled astroturf playing field to a state-of-the-art surface like the one at the FA's new England Training Centre. It'll be used by football community clubs and, for the first time, the local rugby club. The new surface is due to be ready for the start of the uh, 2013-14 season. Fire safety checks. Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service is offering free home safety checks for vulnerable residents to help check for potential hazards, fit free smoke detectors and plan escape routes. Firefighters are asking people to refer vulnerable people for the service, such as the elderly or disabled, people with a disability or illness and those living alone or abusing alcohol or drugs. And to make a referral call, you should ring 01256 300302. Teenage Kicks Young people with disabilities can join the Teen Scene Youth Group at the Youthy Building opposite Farnborough Leisure Centre. The 13 to 18 year olds choose activities including art, music, games, bowling, karaoke or watching DVDs. Sessions are from 6.30pm to 8.30pm term time on Wednesdays, organised by the Parity for Disability on behalf of the Rushmore Disability Forum. To book for that, call 01252 375581. An electronic newspaper which helps people with dementia and their carers is having a big impact in Rushmore. The Sparkle electronic paper, which can be read on a computer screen or printed out, is one of a range of services being offered across Aldershot and Farnborough to improve the quality of life of older people, helping with independent living, support healthier lifestyles, and enable them to get more involved in social activities. Sparkle is designed to hold the attention of people with dementia using special fonts and articles about the past and quizzes. It's for people in the early stages of dementia who can still be engaged by publications with the help of their carers. One local resident has seen how Sparkle has made a real difference to her mum, Maggie cares for her mother, who's early stage of vascular dementia and has been receiving sparkle for seven months. She said, My mum has still not fully come to terms with her condition. We're able to have conversations, but she can become confused, repetitive and upset about recent events. 
The wonderful thing about Sparkle is it helps to focus Mum's memories on the past, which leads to tales of happier times in her life. Mum looks forward to me arriving with Sparkle, and I'm delighted that it helps us to laugh together once again. And if you're a carer or someone with dementia, call RHL on 01252-326-660 to find out how you can sign up to Sparkle. There are difficult decisions over the benefits plan. Your views are helping the Council make difficult decisions about changes to Council tax benefit and discounts for residents. Until now, we received 100% funding from the Government to help those on a low income pay their Council tax. But now, the Government has instructed all local Councils to develop their own Council tax support scheme to suit local need. We've carried out an extensive consultation and the results will help shape that scheme. The government says pensioners must continue to receive the same level of support and care must be taken to protect the vulnerable. That means other people currently receiving council tax benefit, particularly those of working age, are likely to receive less support. At the same time, new rules mean council tax discounts currently offered on empty and second homes could be removed or reduced, and we could charge more on properties that are empty for a long time. A consultation about the changes, which was widely publicised, took place this autumn, and the closing date for comments was December the 3rd. We'll publish the details of our new schemes early next year, and the changes come into effect in April 2013. If you're affected by the changes, we'll write to you to let you know. But keep an eye on our website for updates, and that is www.rushmore.gov.uk. We're taking action over empty homes. Is an empty property attracting antisocial behaviour or ruining the appearance of your neighbourhood? The Council is working to bring vacant homes back into use in a bid to provide much-needed housing for families. Empty homes can become run down very quickly and have a negative impact on the neighbourhood and the people living there. We offer support and advice to owners of empty homes to help bring their properties back into use. When all means of encouraging an owner to restore an empty property have failed, we can take enforcement action and, where necessary, make a compulsory purchase order to buy the property. The proceeds go to the owner minus the council's costs. Sue Thornett, the Housing Strategy Enabling Officer at the council, said, With families in need of homes, allowing properties to stay empty is a huge waste. We encourage people to report these houses to us and urge owners of empty houses to talk to us to see how we can help. When our report of properties has been empty for six months or more, call 01252 398 632. And now uh, to give you something from a synopsis of a few of the uh, of some more advertisements. Now, firstly, the, this is actually an advertisement for uh, Gracewell Healthcare in Cambly, but it also tells a story which may be of interest. Joyce Kirby, a resident at Abercorn House, was crowned Gracewell Healthcare Home Champion in 2012. The 83-year-old was hailed as an inspiration for her tireless commitment to her husband, Donald, and for her ability to light up a room with her friendly smile. Joyce was one of four residents who made the final of the inaugural awards ceremony, which was held to mark Older People's Day, which was October the 1st. Each finalist was nominated by a carer at Abercorn House, who felt moved by the contribution that the individual had made to the home. Abercorn House is an elegant purpose-built nursing home set in beautiful woodland surroundings and well-kept gardens, which our residents and families love to enjoy throughout the year. Discovery and delivery of tiny details are our priority to providing highly personalised care. An Arthur Tanner, home manager, would be delighted to speak or meet with you to discuss your needs. You can call him on 01276. 32773. 
There's also an advertisement for Devereux House, which is residential care home and day care centre for the elderly. And that's at um, the Farnborough and Cove War Memorial Hospital Trust Limited, 69 Albert Road, Farnborough. And you can telephone 01252 512967. And finally, Nellwood is a, uh, provides quality residential and nursing care for the elderly over 65 years. It's a non-profit making charity and caters for up to 52 residents housed in a large Victorian country house with two new wings set in a delightful garden with several acres of lawn and woodland. There's a home in the atmosphere and it's comfortable accommodation. All bedrooms have ensuite facilities. There's three lounges and two dining rooms and all floors have lift access. And you can contact them by telephone on 01252 542169 or email Nellwood and that is spelt K-N-E-L-L-W-O-O-D Nellwood at AOL.com or for that matter you could call in at Nellwood which is at 83 Canterbury Road, Farnborough. Exercise has transformed the life of multiple sclerosis sufferer Caroline Emberson. The 44-year-old from Aldershot is one of a number of patients to benefit from Rushmore's Get Active scheme, a GP-led project encouraging patients to improve their own health through exercise to complement more traditional treatments. Participants are offered a 12-week exercise program at Aldershot's Connaught Leisure Centre or Farnborough Leisure Centre at greatly reduced prices. Caroline was referred to the gym by her GP and has been working out regularly and attending Pilates classes since January. Now three stone lighter and feeling fitter and healthier, she said, With my MS I get severe fatigue, neck spasms, aches and pains, and I tend to fall when I'm walking, which made keeping fit and active very difficult. That's why the GP referral scheme has been so brilliant. I can go on the walking machine and walk at my own pace with no risk of falling over. And I can also do a lot of the physio and weight machines as I'm sitting down. It's very reassuring to know there are people there to assist me if I need help. The scheme is open to anyone over the age of 16 who is inactive and has one or more of the following medical conditions. A BMI of more than 30, high blood pressure, diabetes, coronary heart disease, lung disease, multiple sclerosis, or is undergoing rehabilitation for an injury. Exercise programs are tailored specially to suit patients, and referral specialists monitor progress and offer help, advice, and encouragement. If you think the Get Active scheme could help you, speak to your GP or healthcare professional. And further information is available from the Connaught Leisure Centre on 01252 344438 and Farnborough Leisure Centre on 01252 370411. Now if you're out eating this Christmas, check the hygiene ratings. If you're eating out this Christmas, make sure you check out the food hygiene rating of the place you're visiting beforehand. Every commercial food business in Aldershot and Farnborough, including cafes, restaurants, bars and shops selling food, has a rating of between 0 and 5, with 0 being bad and needing urgent improvement, and 5 being very good. They get their ratings based on a food hygiene inspection from the Council's food safety team, and receive a certificate and sticker to display so that people buying food can make an informed choice. All the ratings are also available on the Food Standards Agency's website, www.food.gov.uk slash ratings. Among those with the top rating is Aldershot butcher Paul Turner of A. Turner & Sons, who appeared on the TV programme Dragon's Den in October, securing investment from entrepreneur Peter Jones for his range of sausages. Paul, whose family has traded in Aldershot for 60 years, said, We're very proud of our five food hygiene rating. 
It demonstrates our commitment to the highest standards of food hygiene. I'd certainly recommend everyone to check out the hygiene rating of a food business before they buy. Our rating success has been a critical factor in our ability to win contracts, and the support offered to my business by the Council's Environmental Health Officers has been great. And now we have a whole, quite a lot of items about what's on. And firstly, just simply going through the, the listings, the brief listings of, of some of the things that are on locally. Now, if uh, you should by any chance uh, receive this on Saturday the 15th of December, which is, is possible, whether you'll have listened to it in time is perhaps rather optimistic, but things that are on this day, Saturday the 15th, is performance by the Salvation Army Band in the Prince's Mead Shopping Centre, Farnborough. That's from 10 a.m. till noon. There's also the Heart Male Voice Choir Christmas Concert in aid of the Army Benevolent Fund. And that's at the Royal Garrison Church of All Saints, Aldershot, at 7 p.m. Tickets are £12.50 or £10 concessions. And also there's Christmas Road Show, the Wellington Shopping Centre, Aldershot, with live performances between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. On December the 17th, Messy Mondays Art Club for Children at Farnborough Baptist Church, Queen's Road, North Camp, and that's from 9.45 a.m. to 11.15 a.m., and it's suitable for ages 18 months to 5 years. And contact Ezzy Audsley on 07760421897. On the 22nd of December, the Rushmore Concert Band Christmas Concert at the Harlington Centre Fleet. That's at 2.30pm. The tickets are £7.50, but £6.50 for concessions, and only £2 for accompanied children. For that, you can contact Anthony Green on 07708 574610. Into the new year and January the 2nd, we have the Knit and Natter Knitting Group at Farnborough Library, Pinehurst Roundabout, but that's in fact held every four weeks. It's at 10 a.m. and all abilities are welcome. On the 7th of January, there's a blood donor session at the Prince's Hall Aldershot from 1 p.m. till 3.30 and again from 4.30 to 7. Then there is... Uh, also a session at St. Peter's Parish Centre Church Avenue on the 11th of January. That's Church Avenue, Farnborough. That's from 1pm to 3.30 and 4.30 to 7 also. And then on the 21st of January, there's also a session at the Prince's Hall, again from 1pm to 3.30 and 4.30 till 7. And for any of these... You register and book through the National Call Centre on 0300 123 2323. On January the 18th, the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra is at the Prince's Hall Aldershot at 7.45pm. Tickets are £15 for children, £7.50. On the 19th of January, the Saturday Story Time at Farnborough Library, Pinehurst Roundabout and stories and crafts suitable for the under eights, but children must be accompanied by an adult. On January the 27th, there's a wedding fair at Prince's Hall from 11 till 3.30. On February the 5th, there's a computer club at the Aldershot Library High Street from 7pm to 9pm. If you want to hear about that or ask more, call 01252. 322560. On February the 23rd, there's a rock and roll charity gig to raise money for breast cancer campaign. And that's at Farnborough Football Club. That costs £4. And for more information, you can email Samantha at ticketsbcc at gmail.com. And uh, finally, for this uh, little list, there's March the 3rd. The Moscow Ballet brings Coppelia to the Prince's Hall Aldershot in the afternoon at 3 p.m. And tickets for that are £20 to £22. And just to clarify some of the box office numbers for booking, 
at the Farnborough Library and Learning Centre. It's 01252 516458. The Aldershot Library and Learning Centre is 01252 322560. The Prince's Hall is 01252 329155. And the West End Centre is 01252 330040. Well, it's panto time. Poised with lipstick and glitter, pantomime dames are joining a host of actors to tell a tale as old as time, Beauty and the Beast. This year's panto at the Princess Hall in Aldershot promises to be more magical than ever, with fabulous sets and costumes, talented dancers, a witty script and a wonderful cast. It takes place from Friday the 7th of December until Sunday the 30th of December. Edward Havisham, the Prince's Hall's marketing and box office manager, said, We've been lucky enough to hear and see some of the rehearsals. The songs and music are excellent, and the show features some unforgettable dance numbers. This year sees the return of some well-known faces. We've been selling tickets since January, so those wishing to join us need to buy tickets fast. The panto tells the story of Belle, a beautiful young woman, and the Beast, a handsome prince, who has been placed under an evil spell. To break the spell, he must learn to love and be loved in return. But time is running out. Actors included Donovan Christian Carey, previous winner of the Best Dame Award, producer and director Robert Hopkins, Joanna Fussy, Tim Barron, James Franklin and Jade Sampson. Tickets cost £15.50 for children and seniors and £16.50 for adults. Discounts are available for groups. To book, visit www.princesshall.com or call the box office. Telephone number again is 01252 329 one five five. And now the Chinese state circus is ready to run rings round us. Human juggling, a sensational contortionist, balancing bicycles, it could only be the Chinese state circus. More than 2,000 years of Eastern tradition will be brought to life by the world's most talented acrobats at the Prince's Hall on Thursday 21st of February and Friday the 22nd of February. This must-see show, Yin Yang, which was dubbed the most exhilarating circus by the London Evening Standard, also features musicians and martial arts and will mark the first UK appearance of the formidable Shaolin master known as The One. Edward Havisham, marketing and box office manager of the Prince's Hall, said, The Chinese state circus is world famous and it's our great privilege to be welcoming them. Tickets cost from £18 for adults, from £13 for children and from £15 for concessions. Family tickets cost between £54 and £70. To book, you can visit www.princeshall.com or contact the box office on 01252 329 155. And then there's Kung Fu fighting. The Shaolin Warriors are returning to Aldershot this spring with a stunning Kung Fu show. Using Buddhist meditation and their rigorous martial arts training, 22 Kung Fu Masters will perform testifying disciplines such as Qigong, that's Q-I-G-O-N-G, animal imitation boxing, drunken boxing, and fighting with traditional weapons. More than 500,000 people worldwide have seen the show, which has received countless standing ovations. The Shaolin Warriors' last performance in Aldershot in 2011 was a sellout. The show takes place at the Prince's Hall at 7.45pm on Thursday, April 11th, Tickets cost £23 for adults, £21 for concessions, and £18.50 for children. To book, again, you can visit www.princesshall.com or call the box office on 01252 329 155. And if you fancy trying something new, there's a series of workshops and courses for adults. Uh, They're launching at your local library this January. The programme includes art, craft, yoga, zumba, and computing and family history. 
Uh, courses are also available for children under five and include movement with mummy and mini movers. Uh, booking ahead is essential. And to find out more, pop into Aldershot or Farnbury Library or visit www.hants.gov.uk slash learning hyphen in hyphen libraries. Whether you sing like Lady Gaga or John Lennon, Community Show Choir Contempo could be for you. The choir meets every other Monday at Aldershot Baptist Church, Upper Elms Road, from 7.30pm to 9pm to rehearse songs from the 70s to today. The music is brought to life with props, costumes and theatrical moves. It's open eight, for 18 years old and over, and new members are welcome, and you can contact them on www.contempochoir, or one word, dot co dot uk. And here's a theatre group also welcoming new members. A community theatre group is preparing for its next production, Two Weeks with the Queen, and is looking for people to join in. The Bright Light Theatre Group meets at Farnborough's Wavell Community School. Rehearsals take place on Wednesday and Thursday evenings in the run-up to each production. The next show will take place from the 10th to the 13th of April. Tate Gould, a former drama teacher and a member of the group, said, We'd welcome new actors and those interested in lighting, costumes, props or staging. To find out more, visit www brightlight theatre or one word dot co dot uk a new scheme for older people is set to prove age really is no barrier called age no barrier the scheme has been inspired by the duke of edinburgh initiative and has been made possible thanks to a 144000 pound grant from the big lottery The project is being launched by RHL, a charity working to meet the growing need for health and well-being services in February, and participants will be invited to take part in activities that lead to bronze, silver and gold awards. It is designed to get people more physically and mentally active and to help them achieve personal dreams. Jim Ruddy of RHL said, Activities will be tailored to take into account age and fitness, enabling people to try something they've always wanted to do. The big lottery asked for unique schemes, and this has never been done, uh, never been done before for the over 60s. Age No Barrier is also supported by the Council Rushmore Voluntary Service, Step by Step, and First Wessex. And just to illustrate the fact that it's for all people, there's a picture accompanied with it by some people walk, walking in a sort of woodland scene with uh, somebody also with them on a mobility scooter. And anyway, for more information, visit www.rhl.org.uk. There's help for residents heating their homes. With the rising cost of fuel bills... Residents in Rushmore who struggle to heat their homes are being offered a lifeline. Hitting the Cold Spots is a Hampshire County Council scheme funded by a grant from the Department of Health to help keep you warm. Residents are urged not to risk their health, but to seek help if they are unable to heat their homes. Experienced advisors can visit you at home and offer practical advice. You could be entitled to a small grant to help with winter fuel emergencies, help with repairs to your heating and hot water system, urgent support with alternative heating measures such as electric oil-filled radiators, free carbon monoxide detectors, advice on changing your tariffs to reduce bills and assistance with debt, money and benefits. Access to free loft and cavity wall insulation. Free assessment for connection to mains gas supply. Cold weather not only makes life uncomfortable, but can also lead to serious health problems such as respiratory diseases, asthma, depression, heart disease and strokes. So if you need help um, heating your home, call Hitting the Cold Spots Free Advice Line on 0800 804 8601. 
Thousands of pounds are up for grabs. Community groups have just weeks left to apply for up to £2,000 to help projects in Aldershot and Farnborough. The new Have Your Say grant provides funding for local projects chosen and voted for by local people. Hampshire County Council has provided the funding and Rushmore Borough Council looks after the local scheme with the support of Rushmore Voluntary Services. We can offer grants of up to £2,000 and welcome applications from any small grassroots, non-profit-making community projects, including charities, churches and schools, that help to improve the local environment and strengthen the community. To qualify, you must be able to show that what you do benefits the communities of Aldershot or Farnborough. For more information on how to apply, visit www.rushmoor.gov.uk slash haveyoursaygrant, all one word. But hurry, all applications need to be in by Monday the 14th of January 2013. The grants will be awarded in early February. And uh, our final item is child's play. Imaginative play, den building, arts and crafts and reading are among the activities offered to children at the Wavell Community Play Scheme in Farnborough this half term. The Council Play Scheme, which runs in the Blenheim Building at Wavell School, is open to children aged 4 to 11 and takes place from February the 18th to 22nd between 8.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Admission is £16 for a whole day or £15 for those finishing at 4.30pm. And to book, call 01252 317 Well, that is the end of the winter 2012-13 edition of the Rushmore Borough Council's Arena magazine, brought to you by FATN Talking News. If you wish to contact us, and especially if you or anyone you know would be interested in receiving your local newspaper on memory stick, please ring 01252 or visit our website at www.farnhamaltontn.co.uk. And now we would like to say goodbye from all of us. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.